let me ask you all a question. Why is it okay for a tank to suck at their rotation? Well, you see, if a warlock is consistently pulling 7 to 9,000 less DPS than another warlock in the raid, then it's pretty safe to assume that that warlock in question will swiftly be pulled into the officer discord to have a little talk to. But somehow, due to our somewhat outdated view of the game, tanks are immune to this philosophy despite very frequently being towards the middle of the pack of the DPS or higher depending on the fight. Yes, the priority of the tank should be to survive, but that doesn't absolve you from doing what you can to provide the raid with more than the bare minimum. If you're only here for the bloody K tips and want to skip this little tank damage philosophy rounds, then you can use the timestamps below to go straight to the bloody K tips for damage. Looking at logs will not give you the whole picture of why someone's DPS is high or low, but looking at fights like Atromedes or Maloriac, which is very much tank and spank, the difference between a 99 parse and a 50 parse is anything between 7 to 10 k DPS on 25 man heroic. The majority of that difference comes down to how well you play the class, but a big part of it comes down to how you gear, and I feel like a lot of tanks, especially blood DKs, put way too heavy emphasis on their defensive capabilities while neglecting their offensive values. Your biggest priority should obviously be to survive, and there's no denying that. But there's a big difference between surviving and going full beef mode. Alright, so if you disagree with the notion that tank damage matters, then you probably have one of the following arguments. Tanks are tanks, stop trying to optimize the fun out of the game. Or, if you gear for full defensiveness, then the raid is going to be able to ultimately drop one healer in favor of one DPS, which will contribute far more to the overall damage than the potential DPS increase you could bring as a tank. Obviously, the first argument is more of a value sentiment in regards to how you ought to play the game, but if you feel that's the way, then that's valid. For the second point, I would absolutely agree that dropping one healer to bring one extra DPS would be a net DPS gain, but frankly, we are not playing Wrath of the Lich King anymore. If you've ever looked into the healing breakdown of your raid as a blood EK, you hardly take direct damage from healers outside of Beacon from a Paladin and some potential atonement healing from a Disc Priest. The healing check in this expansion is not whether or not you can heal the tank damage, but whether or not your healers can keep up with the incoming raid-wide AoE damage. There are a ton of gearing optimizations you can do to try to find a solid balance based on your own gear and what your raid requires. If your healers are absolute papegas, then you'll perhaps just have to stick to stacking stamina and mastery beyond reproach. But let me provide you with some changes you can make while raiding to provide huge output gains while giving up very little in terms of survivability. First, if you're using Stoneskin Gargoyle, it's time to use your Death Gate to go back to Ebon Hole to re-enchant it to Fallen Crusader. The defensive gain from Stone Skin Gargoyle is so minor compared to the 1k DPS gain from Fallen Crusader, which also gives you 1% parry and is responsible for 3-5% of your overall healing. This one, to me, in whatever scenario you're in, is an absolute no-brainer. Second, stop pre-potting with armor. A good Blood Death Knight will have around 40-60k DPS in their opener and not amplifying this damage with the Strength Potion does not make any sense whatsoever. You're never in a scenario where an armor pot will make a meaningful difference at the start of the fight anyhow, and thus should always be skipped. Depending on your rating environment, there may be cases where you want to use an armor pot at some point during the fight, but in 99% of cases I opt to use a Strength Potion along with a second or third Dancing Room weapon. Third, make sure to snapshot your pet with buffs and lust. One race dead can easily be responsible for 3-4% of your damage depending on the length of the fight, and as such, we should make sure it's as strong as possible when we pop it. Ideally, you'll want to use your race dead right after your first dancing ruin weapon is over while still being affected by your prepot, trinket, and bloodlust. Fourth, skip the tanking tier and go for the DPS tier. It's way better sided for you and the 4 piece bonus scales with vengeance. Use the battle plate of ancient kings as your off piece for this set. If you haven't watched it already, I'm sure you can pick up on a lot of new information in the blood DK guide I released a while ago. And if you're interested in a full blown parsing video for the blood DK, I'm sure we can make that happen. Let me know in the comments and make sure to subscribe. But that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time.